Welcome to the Credible Nerds Podcast. We provide news, commentary, and reviews for all types of nerds, from the hardcore to the casual. What's up, my nerd? All right. Hey, Star Wars fans. Welcome to the Credible Nerds Podcast as we talk about The Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 6. Forget what chapter that is. <laughs> Um, that's yeah. like your that's like your yeah. that's your thing now yeah i don't know what chapter we're on but we're gonna talk about it <laughs> my name is it. justin and i have my fellow hosts with me blake and nathan how are you guys doing good doing good awesome so this one this episode uh, is called guns for hire and <laughs> which i don't know why there's no there's <laughs> yeah <laughs> but okay uh, so we last saw our heroes as they were, they decided they had gone back to Navarro, helped free Grief Karga and the citizens from the pirates. And they're like, hey, so now we're going to go find all these Mandalorians that are out there in the universe, bring them together, and we're going to reestablish Mandalore. Yeah. So um, Din Djarin and Bo Katan and Grogu head out to, to find them. Uh, as far as. This episode starts off with uh, a ship full of quarren, I think they are. The, oh, yeah. the, you know, the underwater fish species that we see here and there. Yeah. And then um, one of them has run off the prince of... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the oh, boy. Forbidden love. <laughs> forbidden love. Um, the prince has run off with some, someone else. And the king has hired someone to track them down, which turns out to be the Mandalorians. So they show up in their ship and uh, say, hey, if you don't surrender, we're going to blow you out of the sky. And so then the prince decides to, they, they kiss one last time and decide to. Forbidden love. Go back with the Mandalorians. So that's how we're introduced to, and it ends up being Axe Wolves and uh, Sasha Banks. What her character is so the mon column the mon calamari mm-hmm. and which okay he's supposed to be like a teenager right that's he's, he's, that's his attitude right yeah he sounded he, like one he yeah he i mean when he when he the prince breaks through the comes to the door and he's like no i won't go he he i got the impression he was like a 15, 16 17 year old kid yeah but she's like like older she's oh. like the captain she's of like the, the ship. captain this, of the ship you're on to something it's, i think that was uh illegal love i know <laughs> right i i mean i'm like the forget the fact that they're not the same species <laughs> and they just did not look like that would work yeah <laughs> it i was more concerned with the fact that she came across as like being someone like in her forties, yeah, like uh, and he was like his math teacher or something, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So when you talk about when you say forbidden love, that's what I was thinking. Of that yeah, she's like thirty years older than him. <laughs> like, like she kidnapped him and brainwashed him, but she's yeah. like, no, you go back to your parents. Like that was weird. That yeah. was a weird opening scene. Yeah, yeah it really was. Yeah, so the facts are the Quarren was Captain Shugoth, and she's falling in love with Mon Calamari's viceroy's son, the prince, who is played by Harry Holland, who is Tom Holland's brother. Uh-huh. Oh, is so that another right? cameo added to the list. Oh. And, and another one of those situations, right, where it's mm-hmm. like, this feels a little off. Yeah. Oh, that's why. It's Harry Holland. Yeah. Yeah. So it's... Romeo and Juliet, yeah. multi yeah. race species, yeah. teenage, adult. Yeah. <laughs> all, we we it's, covered it's all, all the bases. It. It's all of it. Yeah. So, species, age. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, uh, all kinds of uh, warring Weird stuff. Warring families, mm-hmm. uh, you know. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, very odd cold opening here yeah. for this episode and then the mandalorians show up like i said Cosca reeves and axe wolf show up to bring them bring him in return the child the prince so they're off make money that way 
And that's how we're introduced to them and what their situation is, I guess. Yeah. Uh, then we cut to Din Djarin and Bo-Katan head into a planet to where, they, where they're at. And this planet is called <laughs> Plazir 15. Ah, yes. Not, Plazir. Not 14. Not Brazier. Yeah. Plazir. <laughs> Plazir. <laughs> and they're able to track down the Mandalorian's and they're there, so they're heading there. And the next thing you know, their ship is being diverted, and they're being course corrected on by force, basically, right? Of course. And they have to land and go talk to these these rulers. So the the planet. What do you guys think of the like the city that we see, the planets, how green it is? Like, what was your first take on this new environment? The, the bubble city. Yeah. Another bubble city that yeah. hasn't been destroyed. Yeah. Well. Okay, so they arrive via force or a tractor beam, right? Mm-hmm. Or um, and uh, and they land, and they're like they're a little taken aback because the droids. They're like they're those droids are empire droids because I guess you know uh, battle droids. Yeah. yeah. Well, wasn't there like a? Oh yeah, there was the droid, the, at the protocol droid, the protocol droid, and like an R two looking mm-hmm. unit at the at yeah. the landing bay, and they were like, "This place is ran by the Empire, yeah. or there's Empire droids." Which I was like, "That's that's interesting." Mm-hmm. Uh, and then that they get on the you know the the tram, and they're like, "Nope, you're going here. They want to meet you." Which I'm like, "How did they?" How would they have known that they're coming? Or would they have expected? They almost it almost got the impression like that they knew they were coming, and they when they were when they did show up, they were going to make them come talk to them first, which I'm like yeah. didn't make sense to me either. Yeah, it seemed a little contrived or planned out when it wasn't. Yeah, like they were totally expecting them because they have this problem, the side mission, right? Yeah. But to answer your question, my I mean it was. It looked like it was, um, as you said, contrived and a very well-established planet and city that seemed to be doing very well for not being like yeah. aligned with the Republic, right? That's what the, the storyline was, that mm-hmm. they were uh, out, it, out of that scope. It felt like, uh, like that planet in Thor Ragnarok. Oh, yeah. And Jack Black felt like, I mean, it kind of just felt like a lot like that. So I, that's the impression I got. All right, this is just this goofy, live, party hard type of planet. and The and first planet that they're trying to protect in Thor Ragnarok? No, when when he goes oh, to... Uh, not, I'm thinking the junk of, planet. Yeah. Yeah. yeah with, I gotcha. uh, with what's his name? Um, yeah. Turning into my mom. I can't remember any. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Gold, yeah. Goldblum, yeah. So, I was thinking of the last Thor movie. The, with the, the glass temple. The glass there. temple. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was thinking about. Yeah. yeah that's, a good, that's a good comparison. Kind of just felt like a wacko place where they were just having a good time. and mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. So I had similar thoughts. It's kind of a utopian type place where things are great. Things are awesome. No problems. But we find out that there are problems. And they show up. Uh, Din and Bo show up and meet with the Duchess of the planets, as well as Captain Bombardier <laughs> with this funky mustache and beard. <laughs> and I think this part, along with another character that we'll get to, is well, let's just talk about it now. <laughs> uh, these cameos drew a lot of criticism, praise, everything across the bar. I've seen online from, oh, this is so awesome. I loved seeing these people in these roles and in Star Wars to. Why are these people here? They're not Star Wars. They, it's, they suck. Yeah. Where do you guys fall on that timeline of these cameos along with, uh, we also see Doc Brown show up later. As yeah. Christopher, Christopher Lloyd, Lloyd as Commissioner Hellgate. That's a name right there. Yeah. It's for real. What, what do you guys think about these cameos I, overall in general? I, well, so I'm good with it because otherwise I'll just watch Star Wars alone in a room. <laughs> And nobody else will, will have any interest. But so I told Marie, I'm like, hey, you got to come in and watch this. Lizzo and Jack Black are ruling this. And she's like, that's exactly how it should be. And then she came and watched it. So I'm all in because uh, 
it, you know, gets gets my my wife and kids a little bit more interested and in okay. stuff sometimes. All right, that could be a strategy they're using, definitely. Yeah, I yeah, they're definitely. It's kind of like what you and I were saying earlier about how it seems like it's like that's the new current trend is all the popular actors just want to be like trying to figure out a way how can i get a cameo on a star in a star wars show so i can say i i was played a role in the star wars universe which i don't necessarily have a problem with <clears throat> excuse me but let's, let's let's be careful and not overdo it so that we're like that's like what the whole shows are all about who who's going to be the yeah. cameo in this episode and it yeah. kind of distracts from the episode uh taking it a step further um when i saw that scene when the doors open and they so ja they showed jack black i was like oh jack black this is gonna be cool and then i was immediately like oh it's jack black <laughs> like yeah. it's jack Dude, i recognize him but <laughs> yeah. i don't really like him <laughs> doing and jack black things it's yeah. just jack black being jack black which yeah. i love jack black uh and i love him doing jack black things i just don't know if i like him being that jack black in star wars but but yeah. you know yeah it, I, the the uh the excitement quickly uh <clears throat> the my level of excitement quickly went down as the scene continued kind of played out yeah 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 i think i have similar opinions in that um I like Jack Black. I don't really know Lizzo. I know who she is. I've heard her name, but I don't listen to her, the music or anything else she's done. But I, she's been such a prevalent face lately that I know who she was. Um, but I thought she was someone else. <laughs> <laughs> her name was someone else. But anyways. And a different actress. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I didn't know who she was. But, then I was but... like, oh, no, that's, I mean, that's Lizzo. But anyway, so it was more like they just – their society and every the whole thing didn't necessarily jive with Star Wars for me. Yeah, yeah, it seemed just off. Yeah, I didn't hate it. I didn't love it, but it just seemed off for me. Yeah, it's kind of like this is the thing I have with all of these shows: is you have these the movies, you have the the, the TV series, and they all tend to have different types of tones that can be very serious and uh, and heavy and, and adult themed and then you could have another series that seems to cater more towards a, a younger audience and so that balance sometimes throw, for me throws me off because I'm like obviously being older I'm more interested in the more you know adult themed heavier toned greater yeah. you know type of shows yeah. they appeal to my sense and the ones that are more saturday morning cartoony whether it's an animation or not that's not what i mean by that just kind of like more like just silly hijinks and goofiness and running around those i you know i don't i don't i don't really care for those well and that's it, yeah i mean and in the mandalorian it's been pretty uneven yeah. that way from episode to episode like what three four episodes ago when you had that that alien like arachnoid robot with the yeah. eye and yeah. that was pretty scary pretty yeah. cool he's being and then drained I, of all his blood yeah, yeah. and yeah. in this case the the big challenge here is that some of the droids are i don't know opening up people's <laughs> yeah. luggage and throwing their brassiers in the street <laughs> and that's the big speeders yeah. yeah it was just it was weird it's yeah. silly yeah it just seemed off. Which is fine. Don't have a problem with it, but it's hard to to bounce back and forth. Like to watch Andor, right? Which is like, you know, a completely different type of tone. And then to watch something like this, it's like, okay, like pick pick a lane and, and just like stay in it. Yeah. And like Well Andor did stay in it, right? Yeah. yeah that's yeah. what I mean. Like yeah. Andor, I loved Andor. People were like, hey, a lot of people didn't like it because it was so kind of like a slow burn kind of thing. But I loved it. Mm -hmm. There was yeah. just some real heavy themes and drama to it. And like, wow, 
in your face kind yeah. of violence and you're like whoa yeah. you know so but is it and i'm asking the question is it because the writing is the same for all of the mandalorian episodes right correct well they have pretty much yeah they have a writer's room a group of writers but it's a lot of dave filoni john favreau writing yeah stories so it's so what's the why why the differences is it it's because they do have multiple directors but the directors don't write the story they just direct it so Mm -hmm. is it the directing that's changing the tone or is it them just kind of bouncing around and like hey let's have a little lighter fun episode and then because this next one's going to be pretty dark i I don't i don't get it i don't know that could be it because i've heard that the next two episodes are pretty amazing. Oh, yeah. They get away. It's a different tone. Um, so there could be, hey, let's lighten it up before we get to this serious yeah. stuff. Yeah. I mean, and I can appreciate that. But like like you said, I mean, pick a lane because we have episodes like uh, in season two of The Mandalorian where he, he goes into that meatpacking factory thing with the dark saber and just kills people. Yeah. You know, cutting them in half. Yeah. Cutting limbs off. And- yeah. Dismembers people and all that stuff. And that's pretty intense. Yeah. And then you got this, where you got Grogu force pushing a ball through some hoops so he can get knighted, right? <laughs> is that how he got knighted? I, I, I was. Is it, yeah. I don't know if that was the reason. But I was yeah. talking to my wife about it, and I, yeah, I, I could not. I, when I saw that scene, knighting, I was literally thinking of um, Alice in Wonderland and the queen oh, the, and the, the uh, croquet, croquet the, scene. Okay, yeah, that's what I. Because the way her her headdress and the, the 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 costume she has on, yeah, I'm like, oh, this kind of reminds me of mm. that whole scene. With- you got a you got a good point there. I think maybe that's what they were going for. I think so. Because if you would have had her acting like the queen, like off with her heads, was, didn't she do something like that? I don't like, know. Did she from Alice in Wonderland? Yes. Yeah. So she yeah. was. She was ruthless. ruthless. Yeah. yeah. So if you had someone like that, like. First you see her and she's all yeah, happy, pleasant, and then she turns. That would have been kind of cool. Yeah, you find out there's a dark side yeah. to her, and that everyone's like scared of her and him, the king. Yeah, and it's all just a yeah. front. Yeah, yeah, that would have maybe have been cool. Yeah, and then they're Bo-Katan and and Mandalorian are like they're doing their investigation, and everyone's like, shh, shh don't. You know, there's 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 more going on here yeah. that you don't realize, and they're all like captives and they can't leave the planet or some crazy thing yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, I would like that. That would but, be better. But that's not what we got. <laughs> nope. <laughs> and how many times are we going to see Grogu jump in the do, do air and flip? do the flip thing into someone's oh arms? Gosh. Yeah. Or as that's going to be a, a st- thing. every episode now. You know that's a practical effect where they're just like, okay, yeah, throw, <laughs> yeah. toss them up like in the air. My daughter does that at home. Yeah. Like, you're a CG. You should be working for Lucasfilm. Yeah. You're doing great. <laughs> Brighton. Something, something, something they like to do apparently. Yeah. So yeah, they're they're invited in. They say, well, you're not leaving until you complete this task for us. Another, you do this for me. We'll do this for you. Yeah. <laughs> Quid okay. pro quo. Um, I've seen plenty of those episodes. Um, side quest but they have to there's something going on with the droids like Blake alluded to and they got to solve the mystery and find out what's going on and then they'll give them access to the Mandalorians and they're like well why can't you just use the Mandalorians they're right there Yeah. and then there's some BS about well there's a, a code in the law that says we can't use our our force our army force like, with yeah with within the city we're not yeah. allowed to have a military yeah. but we're allowed to have a hired mercenaries <laughs> but, but, but yeah. then they said you can keep all of your guns because you're mandalorians <laughs> but they're mandalorians <laughs> yeah, those guys are too. whatever <laughs> yeah i didn't i didn't yeah. follow on to the next thing yeah so they i'm sure it makes sense to somebody <laughs> <laughs> yeah it seems like this episode was edited heavily like they, they shot show. it and then they're like, oh. That doesn't work. Yeah, it's not working. Or maybe it was too dark with this bad queen or something. And so they had to move things around, reshoot some stuff to make it funny. And it just came out odd. Yeah. I, I would bet money on that than, than anything, really. Mm. So, But anyway, um, so they agree to go do it. They go down and investigate. I did like them investigating what was going on. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, asking questions, going to the droid bar. What did you guys think about the droid bar? That was weird. 
<laughs> I know I was trying to wrap around like, is this a social thing? Is it? Yeah. Is it just maintenance? I yeah. They're dro- They're not like. Are we? Is this like a? Yeah, like is it a? Are they is this Blade Runner now? Are they, are they what, like what droids have, get days off and they hang out in a bar and get <laughs> oil is lubed up? Yeah, <laughs> it's just like oh I oh quitting time. It's five thirty. So it's five o'clock somewhere. I guess I'll hit the, the droid bar and yeah. you know I'm like what and what are they? What are they? They're they've got some sort of social agenda now. They're hanging out and just talking. I like what this is weird. This yeah. is weird. I didn't get it. Well, they they even brought up that the droids, it's not like they get drunk or have some pleasure from this. It's just yeah. like everybody gets the same thing and they have to do it. But they all want to do it and just hang out and talk. And they walk in and all the, the everything yeah, stops, stops and all the droids look at them like, <laughs> yeah. well, okay, that's not that yeah. trope, that cliche. Yeah. And they're like, I was that kind of like a throwback to the cantina on tatooine like oh i don't we don't serve your kind here i was waiting for that line yeah I we should have had it good, yeah. we should have yeah. yeah that would have been funny yeah. or pretty cool actually yeah missed opportunity there mm-hmm. so by going there they're able to find out um kind of create there was a trail that some droids use this certain uh can canister or the fluid was different. Yeah. So they figured it out that what's related to this canister. Then they w- tracked it down and took it to the lab and got um, analyzed. And they realized it was full of nanobots. Nanobots, yeah. Nanomites or something. So I think, yeah. And those were kind of creating the the problems. It, and then, you know, this also reminded me of is that part was um, the scene from uh, Wally. The, you know how there's like yeah. the droids some droids on the ship just go crazy and start so attacking people and things like that I'm yeah, like, yeah i was like this is like so so this episode is like you guys ever see the movie zootopia yes yeah. this is like zootopia this is literally that is you know, it yeah oh i it's oh oh because they're all, like all the people and robots living together yeah and, some and aren't the animals like regressing back to yeah. their like animal state or something like that yeah yeah it was yeah you're right yeah, yeah. we didn't have a dmv scene though <laughs> no no we didn't yeah. with a really slow <laughs> droid <laughs> so we get a scene where the the ball torture droid comes in and sticks a, a needle in the, the one droid that they they had. And because of that, that droid got infected and then they were able it kind of helped them solve the mystery even more. So, yeah. and they were able to trace it back to uh, Christopher Lloyd's character, commander Hellgate. Yeah. And get him is a Scooby-Doo moment. That's what I got out of it. Oh yeah. And I would have done it if it wasn't for you kids. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You Mandalorians. But he he kind of talked about his plot, right? All the separatists were right all along. Count Dooku was, you know, he had the right idea, and uh, then they stunned him. Is that what happened? They st- he was going off, yeah. and then they just kind of yeah. took him down, shocked him, and he just yeah, went yeah. down. And I kind of yeah. thought, hope Christopher Lloyd's <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's like no, he's <laughs> dead, drop into the floor. <laughs> Oh yeah. Well, he was. You're talking about before they take him before the king and the queen or whatever they are. He's like, I'm gonna smash this button. Yeah. And they. Like, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that part. Yeah. yeah. Did they stun him or just knock him over the head or something? I think they stunned him with like a. Did someone shoot him with a stun gun? So, but, but is that the scene where he brings up the separatists and the Count Dooku? All right. So explain this to me then. <clears throat> My understanding has always been that Count Dooku was working for the Emperor and that the Emperor was playing both sides. And he was basically creating, he was the one creating the Separatist movement so that he could create his clone war army and eventually use that as a, as a way to get control over everything, right? Right. right. So do people not understand that nope. or fig- have that figured out yet no nope. dooku was working with the emperor but only him and even general grievous didn't know that oh he was second in command oh i see i didn't know. i wouldn't have known that yeah grievous didn't even know right 
So it was basically those two, the Sith rule of the t- rule of two, work those Sith lords working together behind the scenes. Because the way you look at it is Darth Sidious was working with Darth Tyrannus, okay, who's Dooku, to create the Separatists and try to overthrow the Republic, while Chancellor Palpatine was working with the Jedi and the clones to defeat the Separatists, right? But, but Tyrannus and, dies, right, or goes away. Well, he's Dooku. Oh, okay. Well, you said Tyrannus was working with Darth Sidious. Darth Sidious, who was Chancellor Palpatine. Okay. So those two, that's the connection point. But their roles, he's Sidious is working with Tyrannus as a Sith Lord. Palpatine's working with the good guys. But Dooku is the Jedi. Mm-hmm. His Jedi. Uh, identity mm-hmm. but tyrannus is his sith, sith. identity mm-hmm. okay yeah all right so was dooku the one who commissioned for the clone army mm-hmm. in the clone war or the well sifo Dyas did that's okay that's right and then he was and who was he he was a um as he's the one okay so i think i'm not i can't remember but either he did and then he was killed or he was killed and then dooku Masqueraded as Sifo-Dyas okay, to do that. All right, I I just don't know. Sorry to go on in a tangent, no but the reason why I brought it up is like I didn't understand when he said that, like the separatists. But was he thinking like what eventually? Because the 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 Republic aren't they essentially identified to be the separatists or the rebellion? Didn't they? Didn't they kind of like be like? They thought they were. They thought the separatists were bad guys, but they ended up finding out that the separatists that that the separatists were the good guys were created by the bad guys to start this war, and so they kind of become separatists themselves, don't they? Who who becomes separatists? You know the Leia and oh. every the rebellion. No, they the separatist ends when the the Clone Wars end. They get disbanded and all the leaders killed. Okay. Right? So that kind of that movement, there's still some hanger on, hanger ons, hanger honors, hang honors. Sure. And uh, so they're still there, but as an organization, separatists are dead. Gotcha. And then the rebels start up. The rebels just start up because they re- they are like, well, the empire took over, and he's not relinquishing control, and he's a dictator now. And we're seeing some, mm-hmm. and then they just those people secretly start fighting the emperor. And they think the separatists were just a truly independent group, mm-hmm. un, and had no connection to the emperor. Is that that's what you're saying? Right. No, and no one's made that connection that we know of, or that that's been explained. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think Anakin, well, Darth Vader at this point, in, probably in knows. the original trilogy era, is the only one that really knows, knows what happened. Yeah, maybe Governor Tarkin mm-hmm. before he dies. Uh, but. Okay, well now that all that makes sense. I yeah. mean, now I understand it better. Mm-hmm. And I think some of the the separatists they kind of morph into, or they join the rebellion, probably at yeah. some point. But yeah, they're but not, different. but probably not realizing that they were being manipulated by the emperor, and right. they were probably thinking, "Oh, we've got to fight this," you know, the 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 government because there's bad things going on it's mm-hmm. corrupt yeah. and it was corrupt right it, it absolutely was but then and but ended up getting taken over mm-hmm. which was always the plan the yeah. the big the, the long con mm-hmm. so to speak as it was yeah and this character um Hellbrandt, hell hellgate hellgate, hellgate. He, you know, this is however many years after the Clone Wars, right? After the Separatists. So it's 20 years in between three and four, and then like five years to Return of the Jedi, and then this is at least another five years. So that's, it's at least 30 years later. Yeah. And this guy's still hanging on. Yeah. Count Dooku is right. Yeah. Well, so he, there was a, you know, this kind of points out that there was kind of that sentiment was still around. I think. I think we'll see, now that I think about it and that we're talking about it, I think we'll see kind of that type of thought process pop up more yeah. in the story. Mm. Eventually, all of these that are set in this timeline, they've got to come to some sort of Ahsoka, uh, Kenobi, Mandalorian. Um, Boba Fett. Boba Fett, Book of Boba Fett. Um, 
they have to come to some sort of congruence where they eventually line up where it starts off, uh, you know, the force awakens and the first order, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't that the idea? Yeah. And I think there was an announcement at Star Wars Celebration just a couple of days ago. Yeah. That one of the movies there, they announced three movies and one of them is going to be Dave Filoni's movie where he kind of brings us all together. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. what I read. Yeah. Okay. So I think we'll see that, that switch from this era to the first order era in that movie or shortly thereafter. So cool. Yeah. What do you think, Blake? Hell, Hellgate. <laughs> Hellgate. Yeah. Dr. Brown. Doc Brown. Yeah. No, no. I, I mean, that, that felt, I don't know. It, it felt it like quickly resolved and, and it, you know, it's kind of like if it was, I don't know. I think we talk about a few of the themes in this episode that just are really short. They tried to put a bunch in and, yeah. and it didn't feel like fully like explored and, and uh, not very heavy and and so with him, I was I was excited to see you know Doc Brown and everything, but the whole it, it was resolved very quickly. It didn't seem like it was very menacing or or anything like that. Yeah. But what did you think of the chase scene of them chasing through the the you know the streets chasing after the battle droid? Yeah, the super battle droid. Yeah, that was kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. He's a pretty fast runner. Yeah. yeah. When, when we saw him in the prequels, they're just kind of slowly marching along. And yeah. Here he's like a sprinter. Yeah. Taking him, <laughs> jumping through the window and knocking him over. Yeah. So that was, that was a pretty exciting chase scene. Um, so the, in doing so, in solving this plot, bringing Hellgate back to the Duchess and Captain Bombardier, um, they are rewarded. They're given the key to the city, which, oh my gosh. Which uh, reminded me of like, like a Wizard of Oz, kind of like Emerald City, the man behind the crowd. I don't know. There's all kinds of things going on in this episode. Yeah. Yeah. The key to the city thing, which, what, it, what was that? Did it look like a key? It was a big key. It was big. <laughs> it was like three feet. <laughs> and who, who, did they give it to Grogu? No, Grogu got knighted. He got yeah. knighted. Yeah. So we were talking about he was playing games with Lizzo and helped her win. Yeah. Is that is that why he got knighted? Did he, did he help her? Did, or did he get knighted because she said, she let her he let her pet him and feed him? <laughs> yeah. Didn't. And he what was with like he's like oh I want your baby and he's like uh he doesn't take too kindly to strangers and she's like mm, makes some yeah. well, she, she and pulled he just, out a little bit of blue baloney is or that something. what it was and he leapt he into did her that arms flip. yeah the Grogu flip <laughs> the Grogu gainer yeah <laughs> I like that the Grogu gainer next time yeah. this summer I'm gonna go to the the uh, Olymp I'm gonna go to the rec center and pull a Grogu gainer yeah. <laughs> Uh, paint myself green <laughs> so he, he's knighted they're given the key to the city they get the royal treatment one thing we didn't one of the themes of this show that i think is important to to show and to bring up is how din and Bo, in solving this mystery had to figure out how to work together right she was like being more methodical and like hey we'll treat these guys with respect or whatever and he's like no we got to do this we got to do this and we'll do it my way so they're always clashing right and one aspect, they went and talked to the Ugnots. Um, yeah, which yeah. I liked that scene. Yeah. That was a good scene. Yeah, it was a good scene, Ugnots. And he, you know, they he brought up Quill. He's yeah. like, yeah, I'm friends with Quill. I liked Quill, so I'm glad that they brought him up. Yeah. Yeah. It was a good nod to that and be able to say, I have spoken. Yeah. I didn't <laughs> hear that again. That was kind of cool. I liked it. So throughout, they, they have to figure out how to work together. I think that's important because I think we'll pretty sure we'll see that yeah good point later yeah so uh they bring captain or not captain um hell hellgate to captain bombardier in the zone for his sentencing and this part was really weird too it's like he kind of apologizes and they banish him and then he leaves it's like yeah where's he kind of went soft on him yeah I don't. I, I didn't get it. And they're yeah. like you of all the people, yeah. you to betray us or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, what? Well, what was his plan to just 
he was going to have them go through all of everybody's <laughs> luggage and <laughs> steal all their underwear. I, what was, I mean, what was his plan? That eventually all of the droids would go bonkers and he would rule or he would create such a mess that, that, or was he just out to hurt people or hurt their way of life? I, I just, what was the p- point of him doing what he was doing? I missed that. Yeah, I, I'm not sure either. It's probably in that speech that he gave at the end. Mm-hmm. Or I mean, was his plan eventually to hit that button and just wreak havoc over the whole planet or city because he hated all of them? I mean, or was he just like just having fun and causing problems? I just I don't get it. I imagine it's something he's carrying carrying on Count Dooku's legacy. I get the motive, right? But I don't understand. Like, did like I don't? Did you think this through? What what are you What are you doing? Yeah. So he was trying to cause chaos, and he didn't think he'd get caught. Like, if Din and Bo hadn't shown up, he wouldn't have got caught, right? So then it it just kind of expands to the battle droids are causing chaos everywhere. To what end? Yeah, I, to what end, I don't know. But Maybe he comes in as a savior and is like, <clears throat> oh, I can fix them and gives them the antidote and then yeah. they stop acting crazy. I don't know. I just did. I don't know if it was ever covered <clears throat> and I missed it. I must have missed it too. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, that's. I think that's the problem with this episode. A lot of weird stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah a lot of things that felt like, well, why would they be presenting this if it wasn't a, something that was going to come back or, or whatever? And yeah. I, I bet none of it does. Yeah. It is a side mission, right? Because after they get rewarded, they are able to leave and they go to the Mandalorians. And this is like, this is the reason why this episode exists in my mind. Yeah. Is what happens next. And um, so Din and Bo and Grogu show up to, they walk into the camp and Axe Wolves, the, the guy, he's like, you don't belong here. You're not the leader anymore. And she's like, I'm here to reclaim my role and we're going to join together and we're going to, you know, kind of explains the plan that they talked about with armor last episode and they don't want to. No. And he's, they're like, well, if anybody's the ruler, it's this guy standing next to you. Cause he's got the dark saber. And then there's a fight between Bo Katan and ax wolves. And they really, it's kind of a, a draw, right? Just, she won, right? I mean, yeah, she makes him yield. I yeah. think at the end. The knife at the throat yeah. thing. Is that what it is? If I remember yeah. right. But before all that happened, is that the whole, uh, I, the creature defeated me and she used the sword to defeat the creature, so doesn't that make her the owner of the saber? Did that happen before the challenge or after the challenge? After. Okay. So then after um, uh, he, she defeats him, that's when they're like, well, he still has the dark saber, so... Yeah. We're not following you. And then that's where the logic comes in. A lot of people had a problem with this, but I think we talked about it. We did talk. I, we called it. I called mean, it, yeah. yeah, we were saying. So, I mean, we asked that very question. So I'm like, hey, good job, guys. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. Pat yourselves on the back. We job, called nerds. it. We're pretty much, that was, we discussed in that up that very episode when we reviewed it. We're like, okay, does that mean she now owns the saber? Because he got defeated. And she defeated that guy. So, I mean, technically that robot never picked up the saber, but that doesn't really matter, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. so. Yeah. She defeated the the robots, defeated him and had him captive. She got the saber and defeated that guy. So, Din hands it over and she grabs it and ignites it. And that's kind of the end of the episode. And she definitely can use it a lot better than yeah. he can. Yeah. So I don't, I mean, I don't have a problem with it, but I almost think that he was like, used a little bit of like persuasion, like, mm-hmm. cause they, they weren't there. He's just saying, Hey, just so you guys know, I was in this <laughs> fight. No one witnessed it, but, but I, I lost, but I lost. And she came in and saved me, and and so really it's hers, nink, nink, you know, like yeah. nudge, nudge. And everyone's like, oh, yeah, sure, okay, I guess we can buy that, take that <laughs> it, it story. Is, it is funny. That's like the third time because the Mandalorians are so set in their ways, but they're pretty easy to be talked into things to. <laughs> right. 
you bathe in the waters sounds good <laughs> um, and they do the little test or whatever the, right. this one and then what was the other one it was uh oh with Bo-Katan becoming the leader and taking her helmet off oh yeah and they're like what the crap and the lady's like she walks both ways <laughs> <laughs> and everybody was cool with it. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. I guess off. this is now the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but. <laughs> oh, that sounded funny. <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of complaints as well that Bo-Katan is now the Mandalorian. And this is yeah. weakening Din and his presence on the show. And It's not about blah, him. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I don't have a problem with it. What do you I, guys think? Like or Nathan doesn't have a problem with it. I don't have well, a problem. I think with it. we talked about it at the very start of the season. We were talking about how we thought it would play out. And I think, you know, we all kind of agreed, like at the end of this, you know, I mean, that's really not his jam, right? Yeah. He's he's kind of the lone wolf out doing his thing and and uh he's not really the the leader type. And I think we all kind of agreed that eventually that's where he'd end up. And so I'm good with it too. I I think that's where he fits. Yeah, I think it's still following him. It's just that there's other people in the show that also have storylines. Yeah. Why is that a bad thing? If anything, it just enhances it. It's mm-hmm. just kind of like we can't have every episode just be about him doing side missions while he chases some MacGuffin to do something else, right? We're like we we need these. Mm-hmm. these storylines i think they're great and he's helping her on there so i still think it's about him mm-hmm. and his journey through everything that's going on including how this eventually will have an impact on him so i don't i don't have a problem with it all i think it's perfectly natural for this to be showing the way it is i i think eventually lizzo will be <laughs> we'll, we'll take be the, the dark saber and yeah. And She'll the defeat Bo. <laughs> she yeah. will in that game. They'll play that yeah. game, and uh, she'll get the cloak of invisibility. <laughs> <laughs> Steal his wand. <laughs> oh wait, sorry. That's that's uh, that's another uh, that's another movie. Yeah. So yeah, I, I don't have a problem with it. I agree with what you guys said. We obviously talked about it, and this is kind of our our stance on things. We're all in agreement. Yeah. And yeah, Din was never, we've never seen him as a leader, as the leader of the Mandalorians. That's not his role. So I'm curious to see, okay, these next two episodes are supposed to be awesome. And they're, this is it, right? There's only two episodes yeah. left, right? Two yeah. left. Two oh. left. And then I'm curious to see, well, what is, so if he doesn't, if let's say the Mandalorians join together, they go back to Mandalore, they keep seeing, re, they keep saying retake Mandalore, but there's no one there. Yeah, so yeah. I, I don't understand that either. They should be reestablishing Man- Mandalore. So, but like, are they going to reestablish Mandalore on Navarro, or are they going to just? I think they uh, go back yeah. to the planet of yeah. Mandalore. That they, makes more sense that they would go back to Mandalore. But Mandalore is a big, that city because th- one of the things is like okay, they went and got that small group, but there's they're going to need a lot more. Mm-hmm. I mean, combined, the two groups combined can't be more than 100 yeah. Mandalorians, right? And that yeah. can't be all the Mandalorians. So are they going to have like this uh, what this kind of like 53-minute long uh, sequence where they just show the, her going to different groups <laughs> yeah. and like while music plays and like... And kind she's a like montage. a montage, a recruiting montage where she's wearing a helmet in one scene, but then she <laughs> takes it off another scene, and everyone's like, "Yeah, we're all going to Navarro. You let's go." And yeah. next thing you know, there's a thousand of them, and they're all standing around looking at each other with their helmets on, like, well, "Where are we going to sleep?" It's <laughs> <laughs> like not a like there's a town over there, but there's nothing here. We just got the land. So yeah. well, even the town's destroyed mostly, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, I think. That's an interesting point. I think we'll see them. She'll send out a message like, "All Mandalorians, join us on Mandalore." It's not poison. Yeah, it's here. We're gonna live there again. The mythosaur's gotta come. Yeah, back, show yeah, up for right? real. So yeah, we'll either see it next episode. I think we'll see the the last episode. Yeah, it'll be like the Rancor in uh, Book of Boba Fett. Yeah, kind of shows up at the end, ruins stuff, but then Bo tames it conquers things that'll be yeah 
But who? Who? <coughs> and I think I asked this. There's gonna. There's got to be someone that yeah. there is. They're fighting against. Is that going to be like more pirates? Because <laughs> I hope not. Yeah. That, <laughs> that, that just doesn't scare me at all. <laughs> Green Salad's like, brother. Green Sal- yeah. You know who? Moss Man. You know who the, reminded me of was. Uh, Pizza the Hut, <laughs> the, the salad version, the salad, version. salad bar version, <laughs> salad Pizza bar. the salad bar. I honestly was like <laughs> Salad Bar the Hut. I was, yeah. I was like, oh, it's it's the salad that goes with Pizza the Hut. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think it'll be Moff Gideon. Oh, okay. Dropping hints throughout. Yeah, the, yeah. The, he's the back. Season. So I think it'll be something like that, and then she'll go, and that'll be the last resort. Mm-hmm. She'll be like, all right, I know where I saw him. I'm just gonna go down and what I'm at the sore and go for it. What I'm hoping is it won't because we only have two episodes left, so you can't introduce this problem and then have it. I'm hoping that they build up and it's a big cliffhanger that they're like, like Oh, I they, don't want a three year cliffhanger though. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, well, I don't want a three year one either, but I'm hoping it's not all. I'm hoping at the end of the, the season, it's not all packaged up pretty with a nice little bow and over. They oversimplify it just to like. I hope there's like they bring some sort of conclusion to the season, but then it introduces a whole new thing that we're like, oh, and then we yeah. have something to look forward to. Where is that going to lead yeah. to? And we, because they're they have to do that, right? Yeah. I mean, they can't just be like the end. Yeah. And then we're next season, the following season, we have no idea what it's about. Yeah. I think the Mandalore arc will conclude. At, I think so. At the end of the, the last episode. And the cliffhanger will be, what is, what's going to happen with Mandalorian? Like something happens to him or he gets notice and he takes off and goes somewhere. We don't, you know, his story is going to continue in the next season. And that's what the cliffhanger is for. I don't know what that would look like, but like, where's he going? Or. He got I, he got kidnapped. Who did it? You know, uh, your parents like, are still alive, and yeah. they're kidnapped. They're on yeah. this planet, and he's like, "I'm going to go rescue my parents," or yeah. some something crazy. Like yeah. So it, it points whatever happens. It points him in the direction of he's moving on. He's leaving, and that whatever that is is the cliffhanger. Oh, interesting. That's, my, that's, my that's your take. Yeah, in my opinion. So. What do you think, Blake? How's it going to end? I think the myth the mythosaur is going to have a romantic relationship with the Mon Calamari <laughs> and <laughs> underwater. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I, I, I think that that resonates with me. That's probably what'll happen. Mm. You know, it'll kind of be uncertainty of this, of the Mandalorian. What's next? What does he do? And, um, yeah, I don't know that episode a couple ago, uh, with the scientists and everything. I, I wonder how that's all going to kind of tie in as well. And it feels like that's got some runway. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't know. Yeah. That character, the double spy, she's got to come back. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. She'll, so yeah. And she's got to get her come up and yeah. somehow. Yeah. That's a good point. Well, the whole cloning storyline that's kind of been here and there throughout is going to come into play. Yeah. I mean, whether that's next season or, Further on, I'm gonna see a baby Snoke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> baby Grogu fights baby Snoke. <laughs> okay, I like it. I like it. Or baby Yoda is Snoke. Baby Ooh. Yoda is Snoke. <laughs> now you're now you just now you're just making things up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that would be yeah. Maybe there's that connection whether it's babies. <laughs> Maybe Snoke or not. I think we'll, we'll see something there. Yeah. So that'd be interesting. All seriousness aside, or all joking aside, though. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I'm I'm hoping there is not. There's got to be. There just has to be some sort of like lead into the next season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think. Uh, and I'm more excited about what that what that is than what's this current story arc. I'm like, the okay. yeah, mm-hmm. we kind of like. We kind of predicted it. Everything that's happened over the overarching storyline is basically what we figured this was about. The season is going to be about the Mandalorians getting back together and retaking or reestablishing that group. So I'm kind of almost like, all right, that looks like that's where it's going. Now I want to know what's going to happen next season. Yeah, we already called it before the season even started. Yeah. So. We've watched way too much TV. <laughs> yeah. 
All right. Final thoughts on this episode. For me, uh, it's probably a six out of ten. The last ten minutes, eight out, eight, nine out of ten, higher. Yeah. But, did, uh, yeah. Did they announce at the Star Wars celebration the Lizzo spinoff? Is that happening or <laughs> Spoiler not? alert. The Jack Black Lizzo <laughs> spinoff <laughs> series. The Plazier 15 series? <laughs> yeah. No, unfortunately not. And all the crazy hijinks that happen <laughs> on Plazier 15. <laughs> oh, no. The food replicator machines are <laughs> not working. Yeah. yeah. Dang it. Dang it. Who sh- what should we do? Uh, but yeah, the episode seemed off. Some good points. I think it had some good potential. It just didn't fulfill it, and we got what we got. So. Yeah. What did you think? What or what would you give it? Yeah, it was it was fine. I mean, yeah, I didn't throw hate a number it like, on it like others did. I'll give it a six or a seven. I mean, ooh, a seven. It was fine. You know, <laughs> I got to see a couple of people that yeah. I like to see and, yeah. Yeah. and it resolved a couple of things, moved the story along, but it was fine. Yeah. I'm, I feel the same five or six. I didn't hate it, but I was like, you know, if I missed this episode and someone said, well, this is what happened. <laughs> I'd been like, all right, I wouldn't probably, <laughs> I'm good. I don't know that I'd go back and watch it yeah. except for maybe the last, the first, I'd want to watch the first 10 minutes to figure out what in the world you just described regarding the the, the, love scene. the 40 year old math teacher kidnapping the 17 year old Montcalm and, and then those the last... tentacles when they kiss, when <laughs> oh, they go up yeah. and start caressing his that face. That was the worst thing I've seen on TV ever. <laughs> I don't know why, but I did not like it. <laughs> it gave you the heebie jeebies. <laughs> it did. That reminded me of the, of, uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. What was Davy Jones. Davy Jones and his tentacles were <laughs> wrapping around people's faces. Yeah. Yeah, this this show, oh, boy. <laughs> this episode. Yeah, great stuff. Keep your tentacles to yourself mm-hmm. or whatever those are. Don't your, run away with your face fingers. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thanks for listening, guys. Thanks for watching this review of the mandalorian season three episode six guns for hire guns for hire because the mandalorians are the only ones that have guns and no one got hired (laughs) i don't think anyone used guns (laughs) they used a taser tasers for hire Yeah. yeah so but uh subscribe to our youtube channel you know helps us out doesn't cost you anything uh stay tuned for the next episode of the Mandalorian uh, episode seven, seven and eight. I don't, uh, I don't think they're gonna do a like a combined thing. I think it's still a weekly. Sometimes oh, yeah. they combine the last two, but oh, I hope they don't do that. Yeah, I, think, I still think the next one's seven and then eight after that. So, so this is chapter twenty-two. Okay. So they'll so twenty-four. We'll be twenty-four episodes into this by the time the season ends. Plus the Boba Fett episode. Plus the two or three. Yeah. 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 And I I know we mentioned this the the season there's no like oh there's no, we're doing four or five seasons. there's like uh, right we don't know how many seasons we're gonna do right yeah yeah All right but I think the Dave Filoni movie is scheduled for three years out okay so uh, it has to end at that point yeah so we could get three more seasons two more seasons one more season. Of the, all of them, this one's clearly the one that's the most popular and probably the one that's making them... All of the series? Yeah. Yeah. The Mandalorian. And definitely the one that's making them the most money, probably, from marketing, right? Mm-hmm. All those Grogu plush toys and yeah. Oh, yeah. everything. Yeah. If, like, my, if Grogu didn't exist, my wife wouldn't be watching. All of the other Disney Plus TV series, my wife has not really watched she yeah. watched Andor, but even then this is the only one that she's like oh yeah she i gotta watch this and it's all about grogu yeah yeah definitely they they know what they're doing yeah it's good it's a good idea story even i don't i'm not in love with grogu but i think he's a good idea so. yeah all right okay guys well stay tuned for the next one and we'll catch you next time see you see you later